ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम सी यू भगवान बाबा से देर वॉज नो वन टू नो हु एम टिल आई क्रिएटेड द वर्ल्ड फॉर माई प्लेजर विथ वन वर्ल्ड विथ द डिवाइन संकल्प एको हम भविष्यान द वन बिकेम मेनी एंड दिस यूनिवर्स केम इन टू एग्जिस्टेंस वन समबडी पुट ए फ्यू क्वेश्चन टू पुराण पुरुष भगवान बाबा द क्वेश्चन स्वामी इट सीम्स मेनी नोबल सोल्स एंड योगीज आर स्टिल डूइंग पेनेंस इन द हिमालय इज दिस ट्रू स्वामी यस there are many of them then question then why don't they come to swami won't they miss this opportunity of seeing god in human form swami said sir i'm always with them and protecting them these noble souls and yogis don't need my physical presence because they are aware of my inner presence in their hearts then question swami did you save the life of a yogi from drowning near the vasistha caves while he was in a deep meditative state swami answer yes this is just one example yes when devara baba who is over 400 50 years old our baba ji who is a thousand years old seek swami's darshan and yearn for his blessings we are convinced about the fact that our that bhagwan baba is purana purusha in 1961 bhagwan baba went on a pilgrimage to badrinath with a few chosen devotees One evening, he called for all the lady devotees from the group and asked them to start preparing a meal. In a short time, puris, vegetables, and shira were prepared. At night, the meal was laid out on a table, and within a short time, many seers and yogis arrived there from the Himalayan caves. to seek prasad and receive dakshina at the divine hands of purana purusha bhagwan baba and waited in a long queue for this purpose no one had been informed about this earlier in any way but all of them came on their own to receive bhagwan baba's blessings they were almost 500 in number and the important fact to note here is that none of them had earlier received darshan of swami's physical form yet they all arrived there as they were in close contact with his divya swarupa the divine form bhagwan baba says don't try to measure or understand me i'm beyond your comprehension here is a story which tells us how swami and his leelas are beyond human comprehension a person who hailed from burma now myanmar a yogi by the name krishna das was doing penance in the himalayas for many years he was meditating upon lord vishnu a long time elapsed and as a reward for his sadhana one day he heard a divine voice telling him i have incarnated at puttaparthi in andhra pradesh come for my darshan as soon as possible krishna das could not contain his joy immediately he left for puttaparthi he never wore any clothing most of the time and if he had to move in society which was 
On very rare occasions, he would cover himself with a loin cloth. When he reached Puttavarthi, Swami sent a lungi and a shawl for him, along with a message that he should wear it and come for darshan. Swami called him for an interview and gave him darshan in the form of Lord Vishnu. He also gave him a photograph of himself. As Krishna Das was taking Swami's leave, he told him, Now there is no need for you to go back to the Himalayas. No. Go and stay at Chaur, C-H-A-U-L, in Maharashtra. According to Swami's instruction, Krishna Das traveled to Mumbai and visited several temples to see Darshan. He didn't know the exact location of Chaur. So he got a map of Maharashtra, got the details and reached Chaur, C-H-A-U-L. During the interview, Swami had foretold the chain of events that were going to unfold once Krishna Das reached Chao. Everything happened exactly as Swami had spoken. A few people came to him and said, Will you take charge and become a priest of a temple here? When Krishna Das asked them, Temple of which deity? They replied that it was the temple of Lord Dattatreya. Since Swami had already instructed him about this, he accepted the responsibility and started living in the temple. The Tatraya Mandir was situated on top of a mountain with peaceful surroundings. Krishna Das carried out his duties as a priest and in the remaining time pursued his sadhana. Krishna Das installed photograph of Shirdi Sai and Sri Satya Sai in the temple. He had kept a small container for a vibhuti in front of Swami's photographs. In no time, it was filled with vibhuti. He had with him an ordinary vessel for food. The exact amount of food required by him used to appear in that vessel. Krishnadas was basically a small eater, so he did not require much food. But in order that he should not waste time in cooking, Swami turned the ordinary vessel into Akshaya Patra. Swami had promised Krishna Das in Puttaparthi, Yoga Kshemam Vahamyam, I will take care of everything. And he kept his word. From the Akshaya Patra, Krishna Das used to give food to a few select devotees, especially small children, who were given their favorite eatables by him. Once Swami arrived in Mumbai and was staying at the residence of Sri P. K. Savant. During his stay, Swami personally sent a car to Chaul and asked Krishnadas to come for his darshan. And he did not forget to send the message, wear the lungi and the shawl and come for darshan. His Krishnadas came to Mumbai and Swami blessed him with darshan. He also gave him Guru Upadesha and sent him back to Chaul. In obedience to Swami directive, Krishna stayed there and continued his sadhana for 12 years. Later, with Swami's permission, he moved to Siddheshwara mountain near Khandala, K-H-A-N-D-A-L-A, and continued his sadhana in solitude. Finally, he took Samadhi there and merged in Sai. We ordinary mortals are bound by the limits of time and space. But how can God be bound by this when he is the one who created time and space through his divine will? When we read about the Yilas of all the avatars, we realize this fair aspect. <clears throat> During the incarnations of Sri Rama, Sri Krishna and Sri Sai, there have been innumerable incidents which illustrate that 
God transcends time and space. When Bhagavan Sri Krishna played the Rasa Krida, one night used to turn into six months and it was just the opposite. When Bhagavan Sri Krishna imparted the Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna at Kurukshetra, he condensed the time. In other words, the time is in his hands. Well, here is a story from the times of the present Satsasai Avatar, which illustrates how Bhagavan Baba can control time. With his permission and blessing, a group of sadhaks left for Naranarayana caves. When they reached Urvashi Kund, they were inspired to sit in meditation. While meditating, they must have reached Samadhi state. When all of them came out of this state, simultaneously they were feeling very peaceful and relaxed. Normally, whenever they practiced meditation, they could not do it beyond two hours at a stretch. So, out of habit, when one of them checked the time in his wristwatch, they were wonderstruck. They found it that they had been in Samadhi state for not just two hours, but for a long duration of 18 days. The day and the date in the wristwatch was reflecting this. In these 18 days, they had been recipients of such a nectarine experience, but uh, experience that in spite of the severe cold and snowfall, they had remained peaceful, unaffected by the extreme weather or hunger and thirst. Bhagavan Baba had condensed this period of 18 days to two hours, that's all. All of us know the incident when Lord Sri Krishna brought the people of Madhura overnight to Dwaraka while they were asleep in order to rescue them from Jarasandha harassment. When the Madhuravasis woke up from their sleep, a miracle took place. They went about their daily course in Dwaraka as if they always belonged there. A somewhat similar incident was repeated at Dwaraka by Sai Krishna. Bhagavan Baba reached Dwaraka at the invitation from Rajamata of Jamnaga. When Sai Krishna set out to visit Sri Krishna temple, the organizers who had reached there much in advance found a huge crowd awaiting Swami's arrival. They requested the temple priest to open the room adjacent to the temple, but he expressed his inability to do so. The organizers were at their wits' end. Just then, Swami reached there. A huge crowd was following him and there was a stampede. Swami, realizing the seriousness situation, did a leela. He held the hand of Sri Raja Reddy, a dear devotee of his, and within a moment, within a moment, they both, they both disappeared. And the next moment, they appeared outside the temple, right in front of Rajamata's car. This miracle was possible only for Kalatita, Bhagavan Baba, who transcends time and space. Swami left a message with Rajmata Chafa that they were driving ahead and asked Sri Raja Reddy to drive the car. When the Rajamata and others heard the news, they were concerned as to how Swami will know the way to the desired destination. But will not the Kala Tita Bhagavan Baba know the way? All other cars started following Swami's car and they reached the destination. After the divine discourse at Midhapur, as they were returning back, Swami stopped the cars at a particular spot. He said to Kasturi, you want to see the seashore, isn't it? 
behind this hill, you will be able to see it. All of them crossed the hill and they saw a picturesque view of a seashore. Once again, everyone wondered how Swami knew about the seashore because most of the people who belonged to that area did not know about it. Then how did Swami know it? On the same seashore, Bhagavan Baba moved his hands through the sands and created a 40 inch long gold idol of Bhagavan Sri Krishna and all the devotees were thrilled and blessed with special darshan of Lord Sri Krishna. The scriptures explain Mahasiddhi's great powers, Anima, Mahima, Garima, Laghima, Prapti, Prakamya, Ishtita, Vasishta, like that, Mahasiddhi's. They are attained by yogis as a result of prolonged sadhana over many years. But the Sankalpa Siddhi of Sayavatha is very different from all other Siddhis. This is Sankalpa Siddhi. The power of Bhagavan Baba is a spontaneous divine expression. Bhagavan constantly uses this power for the welfare of the people. In the Shirdi incarnation, Sainam exhibited his mastery over all these eight Siddhis. In the tenth chapter of Shirdi Sai Satcharitra, it has been described as follows. Baba slept on a wooden plank about four arms in length and only a span in breadth. It was tied like a swing to the rafters of the Masid with the rags. The rags were so thin and worn out that it was a wonder how they could even bear or support the weight of the plank itself, let alone the weight of Baba. But somehow or other, it was Baba's sheer leela that the worn out rags did sustain the plank with Baba's weight on it. On the four corners of this plank, Baba lighted earthen lamps which were kept burning all night. It was a sight for the gods to see how Baba moved up and down the plank which was hanging in Mandir. To the one who uh, is above gunas, how can any physical object upset him? Baba had all the eight Maha Siddhis, great powers at his command. He never craved or labored for them. They came to him naturally as a result of his perfection. In the present Sri Satsa Avatar, the devotees have experienced the Siddhi Rupa of Swami on many occasions. Years ago, when Swami was once bitten by a snake, he touched a devotee who was beside him and it was as if Swami's Mahasiddhi manifested in the devotee for a short span. Just like Swami, the devotee's hand started moving in a circular motion and a medicinal herb appeared in his palm. He gave the herb to Swami and instantly the effect of the poison disappeared. The devotee was completely unaware of what was happening. He only felt a slight twinge of pain for a few moments while the herb manifested in his palm. The great philosopher Sri T. S. Bharade, B H A R A D, has said, Sri Satya Sai Maha Siddhi is such that the reality of its miracles can easily convince even a hardcore rationalist intellectual who generally disbelieves miracles. All this goes to show the powerful effect of Atma Shikti, the power of the soul, on the Jada Shikti, the power of the physical. Thank you for your time. We shall meet later.